In uh, Koto Kato, no mai haere mai e te no Rotary. Ko te puno paho ko Rotary Matters e paho ana atu ki fako ori ori. My name is Rob Stockley. I'm from the Rotary Club of Carterton, and I'm coming to you from Arrow FM on 92.7 Access Radio in Masterton, Wider Upper. Um, so this is Rotary Matters, where we. Uh, talk about uh, things rotary that have been going on in uh, Wairarapa and uh, within our local clubs. Uh, one of the one of the most, I guess, one of the biggest things for our club that's happened in the last uh, couple of weeks is that we were uh, lucky to be visited by our uh, new district governor, Gillian Jones. And she, she presented to us and said uh, a couple of things which uh, really struck a chord with me. Um, she asked. She posed a whole pile of questions, and I'm going to pose them to you now. Um, she started with, "Who started the Crippled Children's Society in New Zealand? Who built the first Karatani Hospital? Who organised the first mobile TB clinic? Who started milk in schools, health camps, defensive driving? Um, who started the National Kidney Foundation, Riding for the Disabled, Asthma Society, the National Children's Health Research Foundation?" She asked these questions, and the answer, which wasn't obvious, was that Rotary, Rotary started or had a hand in starting all of those things. Um, it's a, a wonderful legacy that uh, that Rotary over the years has uh, left us with here in New Zealand, and it's very, very humbling for us as today's club members to um, look back at that legacy and 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 continue giving and continue tr- contributing to uh, to our communities and to our society. So one that's not in that list, but uh, which wasn't started in New Zealand, but something that we're very passionate about here in New Zealand uh, is, is, is the polio campaign. Um, the polio campaign has been going on worldwide, uh, sponsored by, Ro- by, uh, by Rotary and funded, in fact supported massively by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And it's been going on for a long, long time with the aim of eradicating wild polio virus uh, throughout the entire world. Um, On October 24th, just gone, um, was World Polio Eradication Day. And here in uh, the Wellington region, we uh, celebrated, or in fact we ran a fundraiser um, called Ride the Train. If you're a commuter uh, or used public transport uh, on that day, you may have seen some crazy looking fanatical red t-shirted uh, Rotarians uh, riding the trains to every uh, every part of the network with buckets. Uh, some of them were uh, running sausage sizzles and bacon butties, uh, but the whole the whole uh, event was uh, to the aim of raising funds to uh, contribute to the worldwide eradication of polio. Um, one of the things that was celebrated this year in the polio campaign is that uh, Africa has now been declared free of the world polio virus, and that's massive. That leaves just two countries in the whole world uh, where wild polio virus still exists. That's uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. So the fundraising continues. Um, it will. I mean, the, this is sort of the last mile, and it's likely that this will be probably the hardest mile to uh, to 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 reach all the population in those two countries. So uh, to that end, the fundraising continues. Um, Rotary Club of Carterton's next uh, contribution will be our polio quiz night, which will be taking place in early December at the Carterton Event Centre. Uh, we've set ourselves a target of $2,000, and, and I mentioned earlier that Bill and Melinda Gates uh, support the polio campaign. Well, they support it to the tune of two to one. So every dollar that we earn and contribute towards the uh, towards polio um, they add two more dollars, so our one dollar becomes three dollars um, at the coalface, uh, and that's just awesome. So our two thousand dollar target could be six thousand dollars towards the worldwide campaign. That's 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 in my mind that that's just wonderful. Um, some other things that are coming up uh, or have happened recently for us uh, with Carterton Rotary, um, the Dalefield Lamb and Pet Day was a bit of a, a bit of an occasion. Uh, it was the sort of the first event where we had members of the Rotary Club of Carterton, members of the Rotary Satellite Club of Carterton, and members of the Rotary, uh, sorry, the Carterton Rotary Corps or Community Corps all took part in um, 
a candy floss fundraiser um, as part of the Dalefield School Lamb and Pet Day. Um, it was very successful. Um, we raised uh, uh, raised money and um, you know hats off to the principal Eric and and the uh, the mums. Um, Mandy, Viv, Chloe and the others uh, it was a fantastic weather and great turnout there were loads of kids there with their with their lambs and with their pets um, there were loads of food stalls it was, there was no shortage of food to be had um, and of course the raffles and the wheel were going uh, noisily no it was it was a fantastic day and it was really cool to see all three parts of the club all cooperating together to uh, deliver for the community um, not all clubs have um, satellite clubs or community cores, so it's probably worth just mentioning that. We've got um, about 30-odd people, 30, 32 people in the in the parent club. It's a conventional um, rotary club, Rotary Club of Carterton. We've also got a satellite club, which is was formed um, a year or so back, where people the, the rules were expanded a little so that those who maybe couldn't make it to a regular meeting or had... Um, had uh, they preferred to meet in a different way, be it um, you know a breakfast or a lunch or a or or in a bar or a cafe or in someone's home, rather than meeting regularly for a meal like the normal clubs do, um, the satellite uh, construct allows that to happen. So they are full Rotarians. They are me- also full members of the parent club, um, but they meet um, they meet regularly um, on their own terms. Um, I know our local club, um, our local satellite club, often meet uh, over dinner at one of their houses. They have uh, potluck and um, they catch up for a bit of a social and and um, discuss the the ways that they're going to interact and 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 assist the community. The community core is uh, is separate again. Now they're not full Rotarians, but they are members of the community who just repeatedly p- keep putting their hands up to come and help us out when we're doing things within the community. And we felt it it was uh, kind of nice to sort of um, recognise them by by sort of bringing them into the fold, giving them a name, and 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 including them in a more uh, structured manner. So some of them are ex Rotarians, some of them are spouses and family of of Rotarians. Others others are just wonderful people from the community who who just for whatever reason don't want to become a Rotarian, but absolutely resonate with the with uh, what we do and and want to help where they can. So that's the uh, the three parts of our of our club. The uh, other thing which is coming up, which I'd be really remiss if I didn't mention it. In fact, I can see, um, I can imagine our uh, one of our club members, Alan, is probably sitting at home going, "When's he going to mention the Christmas parade? When's he going to mention the Christmas parade?" Well, here we go, Alan. This is the Christmas parade in Carterton each year. Rotary convenes the Christmas parade. Um, it's always a fabulous success. Um, this year it's on uh, the Saturday the 28th of November so it will uh, happen in a couple of weeks time um, this year again we're going to turn it backwards so we'll be starting at the Belvedere Rugby Club again and coming through the town and finishing at Carrington Park it worked really well last year going in that direction because we had a whole bunch of activities happening at Carrington Park now this year Carterton District Council have brought their uh, community street party to Carrington Park following the Christmas parade so there will be a whole lot more activities last year we had the Air Force Band playing and a number of food trucks this year there'll be the food trucks uh, we've got gosh there's there's a whole heap of stuff there's uh, the Wired Up a Kids Choir will be singing uh, we've got uh, rising opera star Anna Bebbington she will, she will be singing um, our very own Meg Hunter um, from Carterton, she won the one talent wide it upper back in uh, 2019, um, and she will be playing. We've also got a number of bands from um, some of the local schools, uh, wide it upper college and mastered it intermediate will also be playing. Out in the backfield, there'll be the uh, emergency services will be doing displays. I hear there might even be a helicopter coming in. There'll be activities for the kids. Uh, I understand there's going to be some uh, flax weaving and some arts and crafty type things, some storytelling. Um, but there's going to be a whole lot of things for the family to do and with all of the uh, food trucks that you would normally expect at these sorts of things. Town will also be open, so all the cafes. Um, we've got Little Africa's just open. We've got Page 42 across the road. We've got Bolter Bar. We've got Phnom. We've got 
Wild Oats, we've got uh, um, Carterton Bakery. There's just all sorts of places where you can uh, stop in along the uh, high street there and um, support those businesses as well. For the Christmas parade this year, we've not really we've tried not to lean on the on the local businesses in respect of COVID. Uh, we know everyone's doing it tough, but I mean, I despite that, it's it's amazing how many businesses are bending over backwards and being so generous in supporting the Christmas parade. It really is sort of a jewel in the crown for Carterton each year. Um, some of our larger sponsors this year, obviously, I mentioned the Carterton District Council. They've been fantastic. They've been helping us out with traffic management and some of the the sort of the larger organisational type things to, you know, for access to the park and getting all the. They're all, obviously they've moved their street party to be in the park, um, which which just adds and makes the day so much better. We've got the Wadarapa Times Age in the midweek have been uh, big supporters, um, big supporters of the Christmas parade and helping us with. Um, with uh, publicising it. We've got Sharp Stock Food, uh, we've got the Braden International, New World, um, we've got a, actually at New World there's been a series of uh, raffles run outside of New World, they kindly let us use the space out front for that. Beehive, Beehive have always been big supporters of, of Carterton community, including Carterton Rotary, they're uh, a wonderful company to have uh, have local. More FM have been helping us get the word out and let people know, take note on Car- in Carterton and Plumbing World as well. Um, I mentioned Page 42 earlier, they've been very generous. Um, I know that uh, the Marquis of Normanby, uh, another one that's been very generous, and of course Chris, not Chris, um, Crystal from um, Wild Oats is going to be um, uh, helping us out on the day as well, feeding some of our workers, um, feeding some of the workers that are, are doing some of the jobs um, to make the Christmas parade happen. So a big, big thank you to all of those sponsors and supporters of the Christmas parade. It's going to be a fantastic, a fantastic day. Now I mentioned before, um, or I, I, actually I, I know I'm, I can imagine Alan now. He's saying. But you didn't tell them. You didn't tell them. Okay, so the we've got 44 floats so far. We're still open for more floats. So if there are more floats, you need to contact Alan. Um, check in the um, in the midweek. You'll see the artic- the uh, phone numbers and contact details for Alan. But 44 floats. It's going to be huge. The theme is red and green. Um, and remember, all of the funds, all of the sponsorship, all of the all of the funds that uh, are raised from the Christmas parade, all go back into the community and back towards in supporting community groups. So it's it's just a it's a, just a big um, it's a big community celebration. Now I mentioned before that uh, one of uh, one of the people playing uh, at uh, one of the people playing in the band rotunda during the Christmas. Uh, celebrations or Christmas parade uh, it was Meg Hunter um, a young, she's only 15, she says she's in her teens and uh, a couple of years ago she was uh, the winner of her um, category for Talent Wired Upper um, with a song that she sang and uh, unfortunately we, d- we weren't able to run Talent Wired Upper this year due to COVID um, but obviously we'll definitely be trying to uh, convene it next year so that we can bring through the, uh, the next crop of of uh, talented young musicians from from uh, across the wide upper, it's an absolutely fantastic show. Um, I found that the the finals were great, but the heats were the heats were just as exciting. And um, at only a few dollars a head, they were really really good value. Um, so I, I really recommend anyone who's interested in in uh, taking part in talent wide upper, or even just going along and supporting and seeing some of the acts. The, uh, the heats is a, a fantastic way to go to get along and see some of our talent our talented youngsters throughout the uh, the district in fact some of the some of the young but some of them were not not so young we had some uh, uh, an older gentleman uh, demonstrated the spoons we had uh, people dancing we had uh, um, all sorts of very very talented people um, and that was really really cool so anyway um, I'm f- I'm uh, going to step out of my comfort zone today and try something new. Um, I'm not a radio DJ by by trade, not in any way, shape or form. But I've challenged myself today and I'm going to try and get a guest speaker uh, in by telephone. And uh, while, I, while I set that up, I'm actually going to play you um, one of the songs from the last Talent Wide It Upper. Uh, this is a song called Submerged. It's by Meg Hunter, and this was this this was her song that she sang in the final 
Uh, it's an original composition by her. So bear with me while I get the, uh, the music up. Hi guys. So this is called Submerged. And um, I hope you like it. was Meg Hunter singing uh, Submerged at uh, Talent Wairarapa Finals in uh, 2019. Now if I've got all of the buttons pressed correctly and uh, everything plugged in properly, um, I think I'm talking to Meg's father, Minty Hunter. Can you hear us alright Minty? Oh Rob, if you can hear me, I can. We I, might be working. I can hear you. Oh, the, well hang no. on, we're, 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 in, we're in uncharted territory. <laughs> um, yeah, so tell me, what's it like to be Meg's dad? I mean, she's amazing. Some of the stuff that she, some of the stuff that she puts out. Um, I, I, I must admit, I was looking at uh, that same clip on YouTube earlier today, and it's got the outtake with um, with Kieran McAnulty, and he yeah. uh, he chases around the stage and he asks her, so so how long have you been working on this one? And and it was like four or six days. It was amazing. Tell us, tell us, you know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, look, it is <laughs> it is fun to watch. Um, I really don't know where, especially the songwriting. I guess I mean, you know, um, it's great that that she works hard at the vocals and keyboard and everything. But uh, the songwriting itself, where that creativity and those lyrics come from, I just don't know. You know, it's, it's amazing to sort of watch. Um, but as as you know, I'm sure probably yourself and probably quite a few parents out there are used to. Um, uh, as a parent, you end up being, you know, <laughs> dragged into the middle, to, to the whole thing in, um, in a wonderful way, and end up being like a roadie and then a, a oh, manager and all sorts of stuff. It, it's quite it's, fun. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? My my daughter Katie's uh, doing. She's on a similar journey at the moment. Um, one of her friends decided to form a band, and uh, between them, uh, there's four of them. Um, they're doing covers at the moment. Um, nothing original yet, but you know, who knows where it'll go? You know, you just light that yeah. spark, and then. You know the children just go for it. No, it's it's uh, 
it, I mean, from a from the, um, the the rotary perspective, you know, we saw um, Meg come through in the the. 2018 and then 2019 and locally we see her in the the um, song quest and you know she's um in fact i saw her at y fest as well um earlier last yep. year i mean she's really come along and and her confidence and the i guess the quality of of the of the pieces that she's producing is just awesome um that, yeah. i mean we i guess we're vicariously proud through you it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, I, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. Um, and, and I've got to say, you know, Talent Wairarapa really was just a huge jumping off point for her, and, and, and Rotary's support there was brilliant. Um, I mean, she came into that and in, in, in the heat, the, the one of the very early heats, um, was playing a cover that she really liked, and it was probably just Ryan, um, one of the judges, Ryan Cole, saying, oh, Meg, love your voice, but, you know, have you got anything original that really was just that, kick off for her to go, oh, okay, I'll go away and write something original. Um, and then she, yeah, did uh, another original song for the finals. But without that kind of platform to get started, um, and then without that, uh, um, yeah, the encouragement, um, then that wouldn't have happened. And since then, it's that same thing of, you know, it takes a village to raise a child type thing, but maybe the same for a muso. She's just had so many opportunities from... Um, yeah, uh, people offering stuff or being really supportive, um, both, you know, Wararapa people, but also um, from outside as well. So it's been fantastic. Uh, it, it, it's, it's great to hear. I mean, I wonder I wonder how she fits it all in. I mean, being, uh, what, 15, she must be looking at, um, is, it, is it exams this year or is it next year? She's, she's Yeah, no, she's year 11, so, yeah, she's been, she's been working pretty hard. She has actually just finished up uh, uh, yesterday, um, and has got a bit of exam study time um, before, yeah, getting to the exam. So it is. I was kind of looking at what she'd done through the, the sort of past year and thinking, okay, that's actually quite a lot when you wrap it all around, you know, all the demands of NCA and and school and everything like that. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I mean she's got fantastic support. I mean, you guys. Um, I mean, you're you're everywhere in the community as well. I mean, I admire your um, commitment to um, sport with the kids, uh, you know, the football and stuff. And and like you say, yep. becoming that parent roadie and supporting um, supporting the kids and, and achieving the most that they can achieve is is actually I find it quite gratifying, isn't it? It's it's a it's it's wonderful to be on the edge of those things and see them succeed. Yeah, well, it's probably a bit of bullshitness from me as well in that, you know, <laughs> I get a bit grumpy with people moaning about millennials and, oh, when I was a boy, we walked 500 miles to school and, you know, <laughs> that sort of stuff. And actually what I see, you know, through, through football and coaching and, and Kodanui being on the board there last year and all that sort of stuff is there's an astonishing amount of awesome young people in Wairarapa who um, are doing an incredible amount of stuff. So, you know, I kind of want to keep pushing that to the forefront and just keep, you know, say... <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Don't stop whining about millennials. Uh, or, you know, they're probably not even millennials anymore. It's probably a new a new set. But, um, you know, most of the young people are really fabulous young people. And, and yeah, when when you get opportunities, um, like what Talent Wide Up or Smoke Free Rock Quest provides, then, then they rise to the occasion and they do amazing stuff. So what's what's next for Meg? I mean, what's, what's her... Um, obviously, exams and that are coming. But uh, in terms of her her musical aspirations, is is there anything exciting on the horizon, or, or is she sort of um, coasting for a little bit? Well, um, I think once her exams are finished, yeah, we'd certainly be cracking into it and looking forward to the um, uh, Christmas parade uh, you were talking about as well, performing for that. Um, but I guess the big thing um, for us is we um, went and saw. Uh, Steve Cullen doing Frank Sinatra um, with the Roger Fox Big Band at the event centre, and it was absolutely fantastic. And um, Meg, of course, you know, surprised me, as she always does, so I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but she knew half of the songs she was singing. Just, you know, any time she hears a song, it obviously goes into this database in her head. Um, but uh, we came out of that, and Jenny from the event centre was there, and we just said, oh, that was so fantastic. You know, Roger Fox Big, ba- Big Band as well was brilliant. She said, oh, I love it, I loved it, but... <laughs> we'd also love to have like a youth focused gig in here so you know what are you doing and Meg and I kind of looked at each other and laughed and then the next day kind of went well maybe we should so yes we're um, we, we've booked in the event centre for Thursday the 20th oh, I've got to make sure 27th of January um, which is with the goal that um, when everybody's coming back from um, 
holidays, um, but they haven't started college yet. Um, a real, I'm going to just get some specific artists in. Um, Meg and her mate Alex, who plays guitar and saxophone and sings as well, they've been doing some stuff together um, and put on a real youth focused gig. I guess we were lucky enough to go across and see Benny um, uh, perform in Shed Six in Wellington, and it was absolutely brilliant. And we kind of came back going, oh man, it would be so good to be able to have. You know, but we're not, we're not going to be able to put Benny on, but to have that kind of level, you know, close, you know, as close as we can to that kind of level of audio. So I've talked to Toby at Noise Productions um, and some amazing lighting and have a real youth-focused gig that brings the feel of that here without needing to spend, you know, $90 on a ticket and have to head over the hill and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's called 1 to 21, um, late January, and with a real youth focus, that's probably our next big, big... Yeah, I look forward to that. There's yeah. a real hep- there's a real hunger for that sort of thing here in, in the wider Upper. I remember um, the Carpi Carterton run their Carpi Soup event, and they've just done Carpi Soup 3, I think it was, but Carpi yep. Soup 1, um, the, the winning... So just for the, for those that are not familiar, Carpi Soup is a sort of a, a crowdfunding um, event where... Um, there's micro pitches, so there's sort of five or six people come together and they 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 pitch their idea to the audience. The audience have all put five dollars in the pot, and there's uh, various others who seed the pot with uh, larger sums. But the, there's usually sort of a, you know thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in the pot, and those five or six um, pitches um, basically get voted on by the audience on the night. Um, to see which of those the community would like. Uh, it goes beyond that because obviously the winner gets the pot, but the 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 other non-winners also get a lot of exposure and they often find that they get support from the community as a result of having pitched. But that first car by soup, which must have been, goodness, it must have been 12 months ago now, um, was yeah. won by Hansel, who his pitch was much like what you're describing, um, um, basically providing opportunities for for young people to uh, showcase their skills and gain experience actually doing gigs in front of audiences, in front of live audiences. So there's definitely a want there. There's definitely a hunger. Um, yeah, so I'm look, really looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I think especially with um, yeah, the, the sad thing of, of not being able to have Tamat Warapi this year due to um, corona, and then Smoke Free Rock Quest was all uh, online submissions, so there wasn't that live thing. I think, um, and I love what Hansel's doing. I absolutely love the, the work he's doing there. I think probably our kind of extra focus from that is to actually um, not just have the opportunities for the people to perform, but to really put on something that is completely focused at that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, like the kind of amazing experience that you get only by going over the hill and as a young person you know in white rapper it's a little bit hard to to get those opportunities so so we're really focused on the the audience as well for for um one to 21 um and in fact meg's wandered in so if you want to have a quick chat to her shall i pop her on for a yeah go on? for it thanks thanks yeah. Mindy. <laughs> kia ora rock kia ora meg how are you i'm good how are you oh very good i've just been talking to your dad he's told me all the lies <laughs> I was, um, I was just, uh, yeah, yeah. What going on? Um, yeah. So what? But, what? Do you, I I understand. A little bird told me that you'd. Uh, I have to admit here, I I'm a um, a listener of Radio New Zealand, and most afternoons you'll find me listening to uh, Jesse Mulligan. Um, I've got a bit yeah. of a celebrity crush on him. Now I understand you <laughs> had some recent interaction with Jesse. Can you tell us about that? Um. So, uh, well, we there was a radio competition for RNZ. Um, and basically me and my friend just, I am a huge fan of Reb Fountain. She's a New Zealand artist. And, um, we saw this cover RNZ radio competition and you do a cover of a New Zealand song. And so we decided to do a cover of a Reb Fountain song called It's a Bird, It's a Plane. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, and entered in that. So it was pretty amazing. Excellent. And so did you get to speak with, um, with Jessie at all? Uh, I did not, but um, no, if Minty, Minty took that opportunity away from me. Oh, really? No. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Maybe he he has a bit of a crush too. Wanted to meet him himself. Oh, that could that could well be the case. Oh, maybe we'll get, maybe I'll get him on as a, a guest to my program in a couple of months' time. <laughs> so no, I um I must admit, uh, there's it's been fantastic hearing um, your dad tell us about all the things you've been up to, and particularly about the late January the. Um, the, the show um, 
for, oh, yeah, for young one people. To one to 21. I, I was really lucky. Um, I got to hear Benny um, as the opening act for Lily Allen up in Auckland. Um, oh, wow. It, it was like a, a, it was more than a year ago. But, uh, yeah, that was back when they were just, just becoming popular and they are all over the radio. And uh, my, my impressions of her then were like, wow, that's cool. And then she released her um, Te Reo version of Soaked, and she was, I, was, I was sold. She was just awesome. Yeah, so, yeah I've been listening to Benny for a couple of years now. Um, I just remember when she released her first song that really blew up, which was um, uh, Over Me, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, anyway, it's a, it's a song about heartbreak and how, yeah, um, they've moved away. But anyway, um, just remembering that being such an inspiration in songwriting. Yeah, it's no, amazing we're, how she's blown up now. We're 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 really lucky in New Zealand to have um, quite rich, really. I mean, I think New Zealanders are, are really quite creative, um, and and so there's always someone on the horizon that's you know blowing everyone out of the water, um, and. You know, much the, much as you've done to us on a local scale, um, I don't reckon it'll be long before we'll be uh, we'll be hearing Meg Hunter all over the radio uh, and, <laughs> and o- opening for the likes of Lily Allen. I mean, it could one happen. One can hope. One can hope. Yeah. It could happen. So anyway, it's been great talking to you, Meg. Now I do yeah, have to talk to you. I do have a copy of your um, of your entry into uh, the Radio New Zealand covers show. So I'm going oh, to um, what I'll do is I'll. I'll lead out of this segment by playing that. It's called, would you like to introduce it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so this is my cover uh, and my friend Alex Hartley, so Meg Hunter and Alex Hartley's cover of It's a Bird, It's a Plane by Reb Fountain. Great, and here it is, if I can get the buttons to work. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm going to push it again. There we go. Been great talking to you. Thanks, Meg. Have a fantastic uh, Christmas and uh, good luck in your exams coming up. You too. See ya. Bye. Hand against heart, beat it back. Back to the start where I'm the only one left. Wild and waiting for you. Meet that dizzy girl head on. Go for a ride It's a bird, it's a girl You know the deal when you step inside It's a bird, it's a I don't like the nerve I just wanna fly It's a bird, it's a girl It's a on the wheel So I can close my Fly a little higher in your slipstream There's room for us up here Tins the nest Hurry now And I'm at Lilith I wrestled myself And everyone said Go back, go back But I don't Was uh, Meg Hunter and Alex Hartley, uh, both 15 year olds from uh, Kurunui College in the Wairarapa, uh, singing uh, Reb Fountain's It's a Bird, It's a Plane for uh, Jesse Mulligan's Kiwi cover contest on Radio New Zealand. Um, that was that was awesome. I mean, that's the um, 
quality of uh, music and the quality of uh, performance that we have here in the Wairarapa is just fantastic. So, moving on, um, some of the other things that we've been up to uh, in the Rotary Club of Carterton uh, recently, um, we had a, a visioning session uh, with Tony Hayward and uh, immediate past District Governor Marion Johnson. They uh, came along to the club a couple of weeks ago and uh, took our members through a a visioning session to basically to sort of realise what we were as a club, where we wanted to take the club and, and how we might get there. So we're still waiting for the uh, for the results of that visioning session to come back to us. But uh, those that attended, um, I understand, found it uh, quite, uh, quite a useful experience and we would recommend it to other clubs to uh, get in touch with, um, with Tony and Marion and, uh, and set up a visioning session of their own. Uh, our one was delayed somewhat because of COVID and uh, having to be rescheduled, um, but it was worth waiting for. Um, those driving uh, into and out of Carterton, uh, if you're eagle-eyed, you might notice that our rotary signs have been uh, have been refurbished. So they used to be the old colour scheme with the the blue and the gold, or the blue and the yellow. Um, they've been taken down and refreshed, and they've now got the uh, the new branding with the yellow and the white, or the gold and the white, uh, and they're now back up. Um, We've uh, still got the little signs with our meeting times to go back up, but those were uh, refurbished by um, Alistair from um, from Sharp Stock Food, Stock Feed, and uh, kindly assisted by uh, Rob Walker, spray painters and smash repairers in Masterton. Um, they did a fantastic job in getting that uh, getting that done at uh, a particularly good rate for the club. So thank you very very much to uh, Rob Walker and to Sharp Stock Food. Um, I mentioned the uh, the little signs that go underneath the wheels are, are yet to be done, but the uh, what they would say if they were there would be that the club meets on a Monday evening at uh, six pm uh, at the Memorial Club, which is on Broadway, uh, in uh, right near in the middle of Carterton Town. Uh, the Memorial Club's obviously the the RSA. The caterer there is Mike Top. Uh, Mike runs the kitchen and uh, the staff there and does a, a fantastic job. He keeps us fed. Um, puts uh, food on the table and he also uh, runs a kitchen for the, the club itself um, really good solid food um, and, and really reasonable prices it's a really good place to take the family out on a Friday or a weekend um, give Mike a call during the week at the Memorial Club um, just to find out what's on the menu I notice he also posts to the uh, Carterton Notice Board on face, Facebook um, and 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 gives away what the menu is going to be for the week ahead. So um, thoroughly recommend taking the family along and supporting uh, the Memorial Club. Another one, another local business that's uh, helped us recently was uh, Mark Signs. Um, Mark Signs is another um, established Carterton business. Um, they did the sign writing on my truck, in fact, uh, with help from uh, Elton Gregory from Gregory Studios in Greytown. Um, but Mark Signs, uh, Mark uh, has uh, updated our honours board in the Memorial Club to reflect the uh, the change of present earlier in the year, um, and he's very kindly done that, and um, and it's uh, a big help to the club. Uh, we really, really do appreciate the support that we get from uh, from the community. Um, some of the other things that we've uh, been doing lately, we had a uh, a guest speaker. Now, some of you will know. Um, Dale Williams. Dale Williams was the the mayor of Otorohonga um, and he's um, basically responsible for turning the town around up there and uh, and doing some really cool stuff um, helping youth to achieve better outcomes. Um, they had a I think if I'm if I'm quoting him correctly, they had a whole bunch of youth who were looking for work and not finding it, and they had a whole bunch of businesses looking for workers who couldn't find them, and there was no one there joining the dots and, and setting it all up, and so he got together with uh, the local training providers and the local businesses, knocked some heads together, and they came up with some programs to get people into work, and 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 it was really really effective. So Dale Williams is a fantastic. Uh, a fantastic doer, as I guess is the way I would describe him. He comes up with the great ideas, but he also has the passion and the drive to actually do them. Um, since coming to Carterton, he's uh, he put his hat in the ring to uh, get on the onto the council, and he narrowly missed out. But uh, I guess the council's um, 
loss has been the uh, Carterton Primary School Board of Trustees gain because he's jumped on there and he's doing some great things with the school. Uh, most recently, he actually came and spoke to our club um, about uh, some of his experiences and some of the things that they're trying to do at the school. And one of the things they're trying to do was uh, to um, strengthen the breakfast club. Uh, the breakfast club is um, based on the idea that a kid with a full stomach in the morning will um, have better learning outcomes throughout the day. And they were struggling to sort of keep the breakfast club going. Um, but since then, Mackenzie's Electrical, another Carterton business, have come on board and are providing um, some of their workers go and do a morning there in the week to uh, serve for the breakfast club. And um, our Carterton Rotary have now also put forward, uh, we're doing one morning a week. And we've got a number of people who are trained up to do to deliver that. So, uh, yeah, no, we're really, really lucky in Carterton to uh, have Dale. And uh, we're really, really pleased and, and quite um, grateful to be involved with uh, Carterton Primary School and helping helping our young people. Another guest speaker that we've had recently was Mark Bridges. He's uh, currently principal for Solway School here in Masterton. Uh, Mark, Bridges, Mark Bridges was a... Uh, I must admit, uh, when I first saw him uh, coming to speak to us, and I thought, gosh, you know, another school principal, what will he tell me that I didn't know? But uh, man, was I in for a shock. Um, his stories were riveting. He's uh, He's been all over the world teaching. He's taught in some of the... Uh, the most difficult schools that you could imagine in the UK. Um, he spent seven years teaching um, teaching in uh, the Falkland Islands. And uh, in his words, he was uh, a member of Dad's Army in the Falkland Islands, which was more of an army than a Dad's Army uh, in the way he described it. Um, they actually had proper proper jobs to do. Um, and But no, he, his story was absolutely fascinating um, and a wonderful inspirational person so Solway School here in Masterton are, are very lucky to have him as their principal at the moment and I can definitely imagine um, him playing a big role here in the wider upper. Uh, recently we also had uh, um, Carterton Rotary Club and Masterton and Masterton South Rotary Clubs got together and uh, we had a guess who's coming to dinner um, evening which was which was really quite intriguing. Uh, for those of us, my wife and I, Liz and I, we, we both uh, went along and all we did was put our name in the hat. We didn't know where we were going or who we would be dining with until the day of. And it was a couple of hours before we were meant to be there. Uh, we were phoned up and given an address. And we knew we had to take a dessert and we now had an address and it was basically just turn up. Now, we had a wonderful night, uh, met some... Uh, some wonderful people, and I understand from uh, the others who spoke of the evening, uh, they it was a raging success. It was a really, really good way to mix and mingle between the different clubs. Um, the next thing that I want to sort of move on to is uh, something which is kind of uh, pivotal for pivotal or central, I guess, central in the thinking of Rotarians. And for uh, for Rotarians, we have a thing called the four way test. Um, one, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? So the four-way test allows us to evaluate the things that we're considering doing or the things that we um, might plan to do um, and work out how can we, how can we on balance make things right? How can we, how can we do things that will be um, that will be good for everyone or good for as many people as possible um, and, and avoid things that would be, uh, would be negative. Um, the four-way test is, is quite a good way to, to live your life, really. You know, if, um, if you're truthful and you're fair and you, you know, you're looking for, to make friendships, um, then you will do well. And uh, on on this on this sort of theme, um, I want to sort of put a challenge out to Rotarians. Um, Rotarians throughout the country, um, Rotarians throughout the world, in fact, um, are respected members of their communities. The fact that they uh, adhere to things like the four-way test means that they generally have the respect of their uh, their fellow members of the community, um, and they're involved in good, positive things. Um, 
So my challenge to uh, Rotarians in New Zealand is to learn about our early history, to learn about things like the uh, the Declaration of Independence, which was signed on the 28th of October 1835 and celebrated by the King of England at the time. Um, there's an awful lot of myths and misinformation, and it's no one's fault. These things have crept in over time and people don't um, just don't know what is what the truth is. Um, and so there's a lot of myth and misinformation around the Treaty of Waitangi and, and what actually happened. So I challenge all Rotarians to actually look into this, to research it, to understand about the Declaration of Independence, to understand about the treaty and to learn about what actually happened and why things were done the way they were done. Um, if, if Rotarians had that knowledge and Rotarians applied the four-way test, then I'm convinced that uh, that truth and that fairness will permeate throughout the community and that we can continue to build New Zealand into the, uh, the wonderful, the wonderful um, community and the wonderful country that it is. So that's my challenge, my widow to, uh, to the Rotarians of New Zealand. Finally, I'm just going to finish on a, another pet project uh, from Carterton Rotary. Carterton Rotary, a little while back now, um, through the it was the then president was uh, Alan Butler and his wife uh, Sheila um, was very involved in um, dyslexia and particularly um, programs for teaching um, teachers and adults and parents um, with children um, of with dyslexia or teachers who are needing to teach children with dyslexia and through Sheila we organised uh, and, sp and sponsored a it was a day course here in, uh, in, in the Wairarapa at the Carterton Event Centre and it was a course um, to demonstrate techniques that were designed to work well with children who had dyslexia but would also work equally well with children who do not have dyslexia the, the, the theory being that uh, you, can, you can improve the learning outcomes of the dyslexic without in any way, shape or form disadvantaging the uh, outcomes of the non-dyslexic. Um, there were some fantastic uh, outcomes and some wonderful feedback. Um, we had to limit numbers in the end for the teachers coming along because we just couldn't we just couldn't host them all. And they have actually had a, a follow up um, a follow up session to uh, to to expand it further. Um, but very recently, so three months ago, we had the uh, yarns and barns. Um, the yarns and barns program came out in the wider upper. It was it was good fun. I went along to a few of those. And it was all about um, books and authors reading and um, explaining about uh, their books and, and, and programs in some really quite interesting places. And Sheila, um, bless her, organised for author Mark Warren to come and talk uh, to uh, a group of dyslex dyslexic students. Um, the venue, the venue for this uh, yarns and barns, was an actual barn. It was a wool shed out at uh, the Osborne's farm, out uh, um, out the back of Carterton. They did tractor riding and sheep rounding up, and had a great afternoon. Um, and also talked with Mark about uh, his book. He's a very successful farmer, businessman, um, and an off-road champion. Um, and he off he pointed out that um, <coughs> excuse me. He pointed out that often dyslexics um, often grow up to be uh, very, very, very successful um, in many fields because the way their brains are wired, they think differently. They think outside the box, and and, and he describes this as, as having superpowers, which allows them to solve problems and see alternative ways of doing things um, to the rest of us. So um, I guess it was a celebration of, of dyslexia as, as not being a disability so much as a superpower. Um, the event itself was, um, was very, very well received. Um, at the end of the event, the children were, they were challenged um, to, uh, to describe their dreams for the future. Um, and, uh, and it was really quite uh, exciting. One of the, uh, the children who, who won that competition uh, was quoted as saying, "I've never been first in anything before. I'm so happy." Um, it was, yeah. So well done to Sheila, and well done to um, 
well done to dyslexics everywhere for for you know for for having those super superpowers and for um, helping New Zealand be successful. So um, one of the uh, other things that we uh, I need to go back to because now I, I mentioned at the beginning that Alan's sitting there thinking he hasn't mentioned he hasn't mentioned he hasn't mentioned well I'm going to mention it again so the Christmas parade that's coming up this and uh, on the Saturday the 28th of November um, is going to be a fantastic day we want uh, everyone out everyone out to support the parade um, floats um, businesses can dress up their windows um, Christmassy theme we we've got the theme is red and green so uh, dress up come along come along to the park afterwards so the parade is from 11 till 12 and then from 12 onwards into the afternoon we've got the the equivalent of the uh, the, the Carterton Street Christmas party uh, or street party will be held at Carrington Park we've got all of those wonderful singers Anna Bebbington we've got uh, Meg Hunter there's the Wairarapa Children's Choir uh, we've got bands from MIS and uh, and Wycol will be coming along to play. Kids arts and crafts. There's the emergency services displays. There might be a helicopter if you're lucky, uh, and obviously all the food carts and all of the other businesses up and down High Street. Uh, all our wonderful cafes, all our wonderful arts and craft shops uh, will all be uh, open in the weekend. So come along, um, come along and have some great family fun. A great thank, uh, big thank you again to all of the sponsors, um, the sponsors for the Christmas Parade, um, the uh, Times Age, the Midweek, Carterton District Council, thank you very much for uh, doing all the work around the uh, traffic management, uh, Braden International, New World, Beehive, More FM, Take Note, Plumbing World, Sharps, um, yeah, all, all of the sponsors, please, please, um, Please go and support the sponsors uh, because they've they've contributed to make the day such a wonderful outcome. So, given that we're talking about Christmas, um, my uh, my next song is a bit of a bit of a throwback, um, a bit of something different, and I'm going to wrangle the buttons again and see if I can't make the uh, make the sounds come out. So, this is a bit of a a bit of a favourite uh, artist of mine, and I suspect uh, Meg will probably appreciate my taste in music in this particular one so I want that button there and I give you Bing Crosby Have yourself a merry little Christmas let yourself be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles away In olden days, happy golden days of yore, faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together if the fates allow. Until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow So have yourself a merry little Christmas now Faithful friends who are dear to us Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow 
Hang a shining star upon the highest bough And have yourself a merry little Christmas now. And that was Bing Crosby with uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I couldn't resist. We're coming into Christmas. We've got the Christmas parade coming up. I know it's not yet December, but... Uh, the Christmas songs are coming, and I think you're just lucky that I didn't play uh, Snoopy's Christmas. So kia pai o koutou harare. Have a great holiday. Enjoy your Christmas break. I will see you back in the new year. This has been Rotary Matters, uh, coming to you from Arrow FM on 92.7, uh, Access Radio in Masterton in the Wairarapa. Have a, a wonderful Christmas break, and I will see you in the new year.